Hi guys, uh, last month I released an unboxing video of Breville Super Q and now it's time to publish its review. If you haven't seen its unboxing then do check its link in the description box to know its contents along with warranty details etc. This blender is super versatile and it took me a lot of time to use, test and then consolidate all the videos. Well if you like my hard work then don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel for more as I always give my best. Also, this product has been given to me by Breville for reviewing purposes, but I assure you that you'll not be disappointed watching this review as my opinions are unbiased. And before we start with the review, I'm sharing a brief info about this blender. It's named as Super Q as it's supposed to be super quiet and quick. It has an 1800 watt motor and mine came with a vacuum attachment which sucks the air which means less oxidation and enhanced flavor, texture and colors. In this video, I'm going to review all these factors, so let's get started. I'm going to start with mango chia smoothie from this recipe book. I'm adding 1 cup of frozen mangoes, a tablespoon of chia seeds, some vanilla essence, half cup of yogurt and a cup of milk. Here I'm going to use the preset function for making the smoothie. You can see that in this function, the blades run on high speed for a few seconds, then pause for a while to let things settle and then again rev up. It took almost 45 seconds to make this drink. And now the smoothie is ready. The entire drink is pretty smooth in texture and I couldn't find any lumps. Because the motor runs, pauses and then runs, the chia seeds have also broken down and this I have not yet experienced with any other blender. Also one important information I would like to share is that I left this drink aside for 30 to 45 minutes and still the texture was same. Nothing got separated with time which usually is the case. Few other things I noticed are the base is stable and the machine doesn't move or wobble while running. Also, the noise level is less compared to my Breville So Chef, but is more than my Fresh and Furious blender. And yes, this machine was super quick in making the smoothie. Next, I'm going to make coconut mango lime gelato to test frozen dessert function. I've added mango chunks, one peeled lime, coconut milk, condensed milk, and some toasted coconut flakes. Select frozen dessert function and use a tamper to make sure everything blends properly. And now you can see the result. Wow, it looks like the gelato which you get at ice cream bars. Similar look, consistency and color. Add some more coconut flakes on top of it and it looks amazing. Now I'm going to taste it. Mmm, OMG, it tastes delicious. Seriously, the recipes in this book have got perfect measurements. Follow them blindly and you're bound to get what you've been looking for. So the frozen dessert function also passed with flying colors. Now I'm going to test the vacuum attachment with three different recipes. First, I'm going to make a green tropical smoothie. You get a booklet along which gives information about the vacuum and the difference it creates in the recipes. In case of smoothie, it's going to make it smooth and vibrant in color. Also, the smoothie will not separate because of reduced oxidation. I'm adding frozen pineapple and mango chunks along with kale, almonds and coconut water. Now attach the vacuum to the lid of the jar and then switch on the power button. The vacuum attachment slowly starts to create a vacuum. When all the air is sucked up, the vacuum disengages automatically. I've selected green smoothie option which is a 50 second program. The blade runs in different speeds to ensure everything is blended well. Once done, press the rubber attachment of vacuum like this. This will release the air and then only you will be able to open the lid. After pouring the smoothie into a glass, it looked smooth. However, I was able to find few almond pieces while drinking. The blender was able to liquefy kale and fruits, but not almonds, which was disappointing. However, Vacu did a good job it seems. The colors are vibrant and yes, it tasted better. The second recipe is a Thai soup. The Vacu booklet suggests soups made using Vacu are much better in color and texture. To make the soup, I'm adding lemongrass, ginger, coriander, some red and green chilies, coconut sugar, lemon juice, coconut milk, and a liter of chicken broth. Next, I'm attaching the vacuum attachment. When the vacuum is working, you would see bubbles rising upwards, which means it is sucking the air. Once done, take off the attachment and then press the soup function. It's more than a 5 minute timer. And now, after 5 minutes, our soup is ready. The soup is warm and not piping hot the way I like, but it's ready to drink. The consistency is creamy and smooth. It tastes delicious. 
amazed to see soup getting ready from scratch in just five minutes. And yes, just to let you know that while the soup was in the making, I tried touching the jar from outside and it was warm and safe to touch. And the third recipe is a pesto dip. I've tried making the same recipe using my Breville Fast and Furious Blender too and the results were amazing. Let's see how this blender works. I'm adding arugula leaves, garlic, pine nuts, parmesan cheese, lemon juice, olive oil, crushed black pepper and salt to taste. You can see that the blades are running in a motion in which all the ingredients are getting sucked inwards and getting blended. And within a minute, the dip was ready. The initial consistency was good. The color is vibrant. But something which I didn't like was that the oil started to separate, which didn't happen with my Breville Fast and Furious. I'm also going to make a green smoothie using the on-the-go jar. This jar comes with an additional blade attachment. By the way, with this jar, you can't use the vacuum attachment. This is like the personal blender cup. I've added frozen pineapple chunks, super greens powder, mint leaves, some lemon juice and coconut water. The blade set fits conveniently to the jar with just a twist. The jar fits to the base easily. You just need to align them properly. The smoothie was ready in seconds and the texture was smooth. Attach the to-go lid and it's ready to go with you. Now I'm going to test the milk feature with four recipes. First is a nut and seed mix. For this I've taken raw flax seeds, sunflower seeds and almonds. All the three ingredients are of different shape and size and I'm going to see how uniformly Super Q mills them. To use the mill function, you need to rotate this multifunction knob. The mill is the last option and you can see the same on this neat clear display. Within half a minute, the nut and seeds meal was ready. I couldn't find any big chunks. All three were uniformly milled and that too, quite effortlessly. Second is to make a dry spice powder. I'm using a variety of spices like whole cinnamon stick, cumin seeds, coriander seeds, bay leaf, black pepper corns, star anise, etc. Select the mill option and within few seconds, the dry spice powder was ready. There was nothing which didn't get milled. I was able to get the desired texture of the spice powder. Worked just perfect. And the third recipe is maple, pecan and brazil nut butter. In this recipe, I'm also going to add almonds. So I took a baking tray, placed all together, drizzled some maple syrup, salt and cinnamon powder and baked for 15 to 18 minutes. Let them cool down a bit and then shift them to a blender jar. Select the mill function and in next 30 seconds, all these nuts were broken into bits and making of butter was on the way. Do use the tamper and the scraper to evenly distribute the contents and now as you can see, the butter is ready. I used two cups of nuts and got almost a cup of butter. There was no oil added while making this butter and still it easily managed to get me this consistency. Neither too runny nor too thick, just perfect. I remember making butter with my previous food processors and it was a pain, seriously. They used to take at least 20 to 25 minutes of runtime. But Breville Super Q didn't struggle even for a millisecond while making the nut butter. And guess what? It made the butter in just under 4 minutes. A clear winner. And for the fourth attempt, I tried milling raw quinoa to make its flour. And it did a great job. You can see the visual. It's so appealing. It was hassle free and I'm also sieving in order to show you if there's any wastage or leftover. And as you can see, there's hardly any wastage. In fact, sieving was not even needed. This is a must have for those who like to mill their flowers at home. Next to check the auto clean function, I intentionally kept this jar aside for around two hours after making the nut butter as cleaning is the hardest job after making nut butters. Next, I added a cup of water, then press the clean button and it starts doing the cleaning process. Super Q was able to clean the area beneath and around the blades effectively, which are the most difficult areas to clean with hand. This means its 1800 watt motor is super powerful and efficient. Well, after using it for a long time and doing a variety of tests, it's time to share my experience with Breville Super Q. And I'm starting with cons first. The wire retraction feature is still the same and sometimes a pain cause a wire doesn't go inside smoothly. You need to struggle with it. 
The area touching the chrome plating and the buttons tends to collect minute food particles and I feel it's difficult to clean it unless you spend good amount of time to clean with a brush like stuff etc. The body should have been without these designs. The rubber base which holds the jar also tends to attract dust and food particles. I observed few abrasions and scratches towards the bottom of the jar after making nut butter and green tropical smoothie. It was due to friction between food and the jar wall but it shouldn't have happened. Next is the jar lid. It has got a lot of deep grooves in which food gets stuck and it gets difficult to clean. See this space inside the lid. How are you supposed to clean if food gets stuck inside? And lastly, the lid is too tightly fitted to the jar. It's a lot of struggle for me to take off the lid after making something. I would have appreciated a simple click and lock feature. And now I'm coming to the pros. As the name suggests, yes, it's super cute. It is actually quieter than other models. It is also super fast and does most of the job in seconds. The base of the blender is super stable. I tried so many recipes and it never moved from its place. The blender is versatile as it was able to do almost everything we would need for in our kitchen, starting from making smoothies, ice cream, milling spices, making hot soups, dips, etc. Some of the best features which made me fall in love with this machine are the soup function, milling function and its ease of making nut butters. I love soups and making soups in few minutes is almost like a dream come true. And people usually buy separate mill machines to mill flour or grinder to grind spices. But this is all in one. And lastly, the vacuum function. It works silently and effortlessly. I recommend buying vacuum attachment if you're thinking of getting a Super Q. It actually made the recipes look vibrant and much better in taste. Super Q is for $799.99 and vacuum is for $149.99 Canadian dollars. And if anyone is interested in buying it, the links can be found in the description box. If you're a healthy food and drinks lover, then this is for you because it's not just the blender, it's more than a blender. It's a one-time investment and going to stay with you for a real long time as it comes with a super powerful 1800 watt motor and an incredible 10 years warranty. Hope you like this detailed review of Breville Super Q. I'm sure you're not left with any questions, but if you do, I'll be happy to hear from you. Do it like and subscribe to my channel if you still haven't and I will see you soon with a new video. Till then, gift yourself a Breville Super Q and your body will thank you. Bye-bye.